Look at some more uh, uh, properties of. Uh, okay. So let us say. Uh, so we'll assume say f is differentiable. I'm just revising most of the things which you already know. Maybe we'll be slightly giving you a different perspective of uh, the thing. Then one would like to know. We, I also already mentioned that if a function is monotone, right, then we know it is continuous except at countably many points, right. In fact, I pointed out that uh, there is a deep theorem saying that if f is monotone, then it is also differentiable except at some number of points, right. That means most of the time the graph should be a smooth graph except at some uh, points which are. Okay, which have probability zero. Forget, forget about that statement. Anyway, uh, so f is differentiable at the point C. Uh, we would like to know if you know something more about the function. Can you give me back some more properties of the function? For example, suppose I know the function is differentiable. Okay, that gives me continuity. But I suppose I know something more about the notion of derivative. That how how does the derivative of the function look like? Can you give me back some information about the function, right? So, for example, let us uh, try to understand it. Uh, let us take the so this supposing some function and here is the graph of the function for some portion at the point C, right? Graph. Sort of is going up and then starts going down. So at this point f of c, what we call as a local maximum. So what is the meaning of local maximum? It is a maximum for the function, but not everywhere. The graph can could go up somewhere, but in some interval, right? C minus delta to c plus delta. I can say there is an interval around the point c, such that there is a neighborhood of the point c, so that the value of the function at the point c is the largest right then we say the point c is a point of local maximum right we all have gone through this thing now if the point of c is a point of local maximum and there is a notion of derivative available at that point that means i can draw a tangent to the function at that point then what should this look like what should the tangent at that point look like at this point there is a tangent possible right so it looks like the tangent should be horizontal one so geometrically we are guessing right if f is differentiable at a point c uh, at a point c f has local maximum at c then we are saying that the derivative at that point should be equal to zero okay so this is a geometric observation you can prove it very easily so let us uh, just give you a proof which you might have already done uh, in your courses earlier so i want to calculate the derivative i already given that it is differentiable so what i want to calculate f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h limit of this as h goes to zero right i want to calculate the limit of this as h goes to zero so and i want to show it is equal to zero so let us analyze when h is positive if h is positive what happens to the denominator h is positive so the denominator is positive function is increasing so what happens to the numerator function is at this point is a local max sorry it is a local maximum right that means if i take any point on the left side here then the value at this point will be less than the value on the point c so this numerator 
it will be negative right because f of c is the largest value in the neighborhood so the difference will always be negative denominator if h is positive is positive so ratio is negative if h is positive and the limit of that we know it exists if you take it limit from the right i am taking the limit from the right now h positive so that will be less than or equal to zero because the ratio is always negative so limit must be negative it exists is it okay for everybody right now let us look at the same limit so here i am taking h bigger than or equal to zero of this quantity let us take the limit of this quantity from the left side h is negative now but the numerator is still positive because the function is local maximum at the point c numerator is still what is the numerator still negative denominator negative so ratio is always bigger than or equal to 0 so limit should be bigger than or equal to 0 right i'm just looking at the function for which you are taking the limit if h is positive it is the function values are all negative less than or equal to 0 so limit must be less than or equal to 0 if i look at the left limit the function is always positive so limit must be positive so that implies f dash of c must be so there is a left derivative right derivative both are same because the function is differentiable so it must be equal to zero okay so that is the reason uh, so this geometric picture we can prove it very easily by looking at this thing okay so this gives a very important theorem namely what is called Rolle's theorem and what is that so i think most of you must have gone through it and remember it so that says if f is a function on a interval a b to r closed interval a b to r f continuous f differentiable at least on the open interval a b right and the third property says that f of a should be equal to f of b then that implies there is a point c right such that right differentiable so derivative at the point c must be equal to zero geometrically how one gets this result is as follows here is the point a here is the point b so f of a here is f of a and that is equal to f of b so that is f of b here so that is equal to f of b so it's a continuous function so let us draw the graph it starts here it has to end here right so what should happen yeah, it can start going up or down or something. So, let us say it goes like this and comes like this, right? I should not lift. That is one, because it is continuous. Okay. Now, apparently the graph says there are many points where the slope of the tangent is zero, right? In this, it says here here and here or even here what are these points these are the points where there is either a peak or a trough right is okay so looks like these are the points where the function has local maxima or minima so if i can say if f is continuous right i can ensure that in the interval a to b there will be at least one point of local maxima or local minima then i am through by the previous theorem and that is our theorem that if f is continuous on a closed bounded interval then it attains its maxima and minima at some points in the interval ab 
So, f attains maxima minima in the interval a b one possibility maxima equal to minima equal to the end points right. Then what is the graph of the function? Maxima is equal to minima equal to the value at the end points there is a constant function. So, every point every place the derivative is equal to 0. So, no problem at all proof over. If not that means there is at least one point in the interval a b right where the function takes maxima or minima that is inside the interval a b. If it is a maxima or minima automatically that point also is local because it is a global thing right. It is the largest value of the function on the whole of a b. So, locally also it is true. So, the previous theorem applies. So, basically it is a consequence of the fact that a continuous function on a closed bounded interval attains its maxima and minima and the previous thing that if the function is differentiable then at local maxima minima derivative must be 0. These two combined together give me the theorem. And this theorem uh, you can easily extend this theorem by removing this condition right. Look at the graph slightly tilted that means what f of a need not be equal to f of b. Then what does the graph look like? So, let us uh, extend this theorem. So, let us say this is a, this is b and uh, f of a to f of b. So, let us say it is value here and this is a value f of a and that is f of b and the graph is uh, something continuous still. So, f on a b continuous differentiable in a to b. We do not need end points differentiability is clear from the earlier because if inside there is local maxima or minima right then derivative at that point is 0 ok. So, f uh, differentiable in a b we are not putting the condition that f of a is equal to f of b we are omitting that. Then what should happen? So, let us uh, look at uh, the line joining this. Imagine this line to be moved up and down. Then at some point there is a point where the tangent is parallel to this chord. So, there is a point C right. Because in the Rolle's theorem, what is the slope of the chord f b minus f of a? If f of b is equal to f of a, that is zero. So you get zero, right? Otherwise, it is a generalization of that. That in general, so it says implies there exists a point C belonging to a b such that f dash of C is equal to f of b minus divided by mu one. That is the slope of the chord. So, this is what is the famous called Lagrange's mean value theorem and the proof also is straight forward you just apply try to apply Rolle's theorem to a modified function. So, what is a modified function f of a is not equal to f of b, but if I look at this end points at that nothing values are not equal, but if I subtract that uh, see look at uh, the chord and look at this value and this value called this is the height h. So, this is at any point x this is the value of the function f of x this is the value of the chord right. So, what is that what happens to this height h as you move the point? If you move this point x towards a or b what happens to h at a it is 0 at b it is 0. So, that is a function I should be looking at. So, look at the function h. So, call h of x equal to right you can take l of uh, you can call this chord as l x. So, l x minus f of x consider that function. That function has the property that h of x is equal to h of a equal to h of b equal to 0 right. 
it is continuous because right the function lx straight line that is continuous that is differentiable the difference is also differentiable right and points the values are equal so rollins theorem apply so there is a point where the derivative is equal to zero so what is the derivative of h it is the derivative of the chord that is fb minus f of a divided by b minus a and what is derivative of f f dash so f dash minus l dash is equal to 0 and that is precisely this consequence right so that is how you prove lagrange's mean value theorem from rolle's theorem or you can just think of uh, if you can visualize rotate your axis a bit so that f of a equal to f of b right it should be true but we are not going to that kind of uh, argument we are just looking at a straight forward way of saying it so that is called uh, lagrange's mean value theorem so this is one of the most important theorems i would say of calculus it says if f is continuous f continuous differentiable on at least a to b implies f dash of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a for some c belonging to the open interval ab okay right let us see what are the consequences of this okay which we have all gone through so i will not go through all those them again for example suppose the function is such now you see how the derivative is giving back you the properties of the function f is differentiable on the interval ab okay and assume i know something more about the derivative namely derivative is zero everywhere suppose the derivative is zero everywhere if derivative is zero then what does f dash of c that is zero that means f of b must be equal to f of a but why b and a i can apply it to any two points in between x1 x2 rolle's theorem uh, lagrange's mean value theorem applied to any two points x1 x2 inside ab then f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 must be equal to derivative at some point in between and that is zero anyway so it says f of x1 is equal to f of x2 so if f is differentiable in the interval ab right then it is constant so that is a consequence of this beautiful theorem okay very easy consequence so one f constant implies f differentiable oh sorry uh, f uh, what i am saying i should say if derivative is zero f dash of x equal to 0 for every x belonging to ab implies f constant in fact i can say f is constant see um, i'll get a point c in between right but you can apply it to what is the value at the point a if it is zero inside ab it should be zero at a because it is continuous function is continuous on ab right lagrange's mean value theorem it says in the open interval ab it is constant but continuity says that it should be zero on the end points also so it is on the closed interval ab okay right um so this is one of the simplest kind of applications there are more applications of this uh, what are the other applications of this now you know that uh, okay for example let me just uh, i will not go into that we'll just state those theorems uh, uh, for you to read for example look at uh, derivative we say is zero suppose derivative is bigger than or equal to zero let us analyze the second case derivative is bigger than or equal to zero then what you can you say about this ratio 
does it give you something? So let me uh, let me so second that f dash of x bigger than equal for every x belonging to a b. So let us say this one. Then what does it will give me? By Lagrange's mean value theorem, f dash of x for any two points x one x two in this interval, okay. What you will get? There is a point x. Uh, okay, so let me just. I am just hurrying through. Let me not hurry through. So let me write. So um, for x one less than x two between uh, a and b implies there exists a point x such that f dash of x is equal to f of x two minus f of x one divided by x two minus x one, right? I am applying Lagrange's mean value theorem in the interval x one to x two, which is inside the interval a b. Okay, and if this is bigger than or equal to zero, what does that give me? Whenever x x two is bigger than x one, denominator is positive, so numerator should be positive. So what does it give you? If x one is less than x two, then f of x two is bigger than f of x one. Function is monotonically increasing. So, how the nature of the derivative is giving you back bonus points about the function, all because of Lagrange's mean value theorem, right? If a derivative is bigger than or equal to zero, function is increasing. Same proof, less than or equal to zero, function is decreasing. So, that is a consequence of Lagrange's mean value theorem. So, it is telling you the nature of the function, right? So, now from here you can build up. At a point C, right? I want to analyze whether there is a local maxima or minima for the function at that point C or not. Necessary condition: derivative must be equal to zero. So look at the points of the function where the function is differentiable, derivative equal to zero. Analyze those points whether they are points of local maxima or minima. And also the points where the function may not be differentiable, but still can have local maxima uh, and minima. For example, mod x has local minimum at the point zero; it is not differentiable, so that is not a sufficient condition, right? So look at all the candidates, namely where the function is not differentiable, or function is differentiable and derivative equal to zero. Equal to zero. Out of all these points, some points may be local maximum, some points may be local. Minimum some points may be none. So how do you analyze? What are the sufficient conditions? So the sufficient conditions are if derivative is positive on the left side of that point, derivative exists on the left side in a neighborhood of that point on the left side. Derivative is positive. That means what? Function will be increasing on the left side. Or because of this theorem, derivative is. I, To maximum, I want decreasing. So derivative is less than or equal to zero on the right side. So it will be decreasing. So it will have a local maximum at that point. So what are the points? F dash should be equal to zero, one. On the left, function need not be differentiable. But look at on the left side of that point and on the right side. On the left side, if the derivative exists and derivative is bigger than or equal to zero, then the function will be Increasing, and on the right side, if the derivative is less than or equal to zero, then the function will be decreasing. So you get a sufficient condition. F is C is a point, right? The function should be continuous, of course. Function is continuous, and on the left, the derivative is bigger than or equal to zero. On the right, the derivative is less than or equal to zero. Then the function will have a local maximum, and you can go on local minimum similarly. So all of you have gone through this kind of theorems, right? In your BSc courses, undergraduate courses. So uh, we'll just state those theorems. Okay, we'll not prove those. So these are all consequences of. For example, then you can go on to analyze what are called uh, second derivative tests. These are called first derivative tests. You can go to second derivative test and so on. Okay. You can also analyze uh, what are called. Uh, Convexity and concavity of functions. So let me probably. Uh, I don't know how many of you have gone through, but I think it's a good idea to go through 
some of them. So, let me just show you on the slide. So, maxima minima that uh, we have seen what motivates one to define. So, algebra of uh, derivatives, okay. increasing, decreasing, we defined earlier also monotone. So, local maxima minima definition we defined on the left side. Okay. In a locally it is a maximum or locally it is a minimum. Okay. So, here is a necessary condition for local maximum that if has a local maximum and is differentiable then the derivative must be equal to 0. So, this is a necessary condition. Right. Keep in mind this is a necessary condition and how necessary conditions are used at points where the function is differentiable, but derivative is not 0 cannot be the points of local maxima minima. Right? Or the function is not differentiable that is the point of continuity. So, possible candidates for local maxima minima as a consequence of this are the points where the function either is not continuous or it is differentiable and derivative is equal to 0. So, that gives you a bag full of points called the critical points. You have to analyze which of them are local maxima or local minima. Okay. So, Rolle's theorem says okay, continuity in the interval a to b, we said that this is the Granger's mean value theorem. Okay. So, the condition of n points value equal removed. I am just revising again what I have said. So, applications of this consequences of uh, if derivative is 0, the function is uh, constant. So, if the difference of if two functions have the same derivative, then they may differ only by a constant as a consequence of that. Okay. Right. So, this is about increasing, decreasing. If derivative is bigger than or equal to 0, the function is you can prove other way around also. If the function is differentiable, Right, f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 will be always the ratio will always be positive, right? So, limit will be positive. So, other way around, if the function is monotonically increasing, then the derivative should be bigger than or equal to 0. So, this is a if and only if theorem, okay. Similarly, decreasing strictly bigger, then it is only one way. If f is strictly bigger than 0, then f is strictly increasing, right? Because x2 minus x1 will be strictly bigger than zero, right? Equal to derivative. So that is, so that is only one way. So that caution one has to keep. Okay. Right. So continuity test for local maxima minima. As I said, function is continuous at the point. On the left, I want the values to be less than or equal to. One way of saying that in terms of derivative is derivative is bigger than or equal to 0. So, on the left it is increasing, on the right it is decreasing. So, that is one way of uh, just increasing, decreasing straight away in the way uh, well comparing the values. So, that is a continuity test. You can have the first derivative test also, okay, we will do it later, maybe. Here is something called uh, concave upward and concave downward functions. So, what is the need for that? That is another property. So, you can have a function, say which is this function is monotonically increasing, this function is continuous, this function is smooth, right. But look at this function. So, this is f, this is g. Function g is also monotonically increasing or decreasing it is continuous, it is uh, smooth okay. or you can look at uh, this function, look at this function h, compare f and h, both are monotonically increasing, both are continuous, both are differentiable, but there is a difference between the two. right? What is that difference? How do I capture that difference between the two? right? In one some sense, the graph of f is bending away from axis, right? F of h is bending towards. That is all English. What is mathematics? So mathematically, it says for this function f, if I take any two points and join, 
any two points and join what happens to the chord that always stays above the graph of the function in this the chord will always stay below the graph of the function and i can now make it mathematical at any point x i know this chord i know the value at this point i know the value at the function so f of x should be this is f of x and this is the value at this point is f at on this chord uh, so call it l of x so the value at the chord should be bigger than or equal to value at the function at that point then it is bending towards right so you say it is concave down if you like to call it concave up so this is concave up this is concave down so let us formally so this is how you capture mathematically the properties so this is look at f of x if f of x is what is this right hand side this is the value of the function at the coordinate x the point x hitting that line the chord this is the equation of the straight line between x1 and x2 the slope what is the slope of this line f of x2 minus f of x1 so this is the line joining the points x1 with x2 so f of x is less than or equal to the value on the chord on the line joining okay so you call it concave upward or convex functions okay we'll just keep the definitions will not uh, from examination of point of view i'll state some theorems which will not uh, because the proof are slightly complicated similarly strictly if this inequality is strict right whether a constant function monotonically increasing will be both convex and concave so if it is bigger other way around so you say concave down so if for example if you look at f of x square the parabola right so imagine your graph as a cup in which a spoon is lying the spoon never touches the bottom right it only touches the rim that is a parabola you can think of it as a parabola the chord join any two points is always above the graph of the function so that is cup up so you call it concave up so concave up is y equal to x square other way around you can take the graph of y equal to minus x square so that is other way around right the graph chord is always below so that is uh, concave down 